Hello and welcome to the Daily Royal. My name is Shelby and I have been a royal watcher for the past 10 years. In this podcast, I talk about the daily events of seven of the European monarchies. So I talk about Belgium, the UK, Denmark, the Netherlands, Norway, Spain, and Sweden. I upload Monday through Friday with occasional bonus episodes here and there. Today we are going to be talking about all of the events from Monday, November 15th of 2021. And I say all of the events very, very loosely. So we're coming to a time, like yes, November is crazy busy. We know this. We have lived through two weeks of it. Uh, It's been busy, for sure. Um, But we are coming to a point where things are slowing down more and more. Um, Obviously, the holidays, the Christmas holiday in December is going to slow things down quite a bit. Um, But for right now, it's seeming like Mondays are just kind of going to be slow um, and things are going to start tapering off a little bit um, in the middle of kind of like next week. And the week after, now, December, there are still at least two confirmed state visits. Um, There could be some more. Um, There are the Nobel Prizes, at least in, like, there's the Nobel Prize ceremony in Stockholm. I don't think, there's certainly not a gala or anything along with it, but there is the ceremony. So there are things in December. Um, Like, it's not going to be quite like August in that it's a desert town, which is why I only take two weeks off. Um for the Christmas holiday. And so, um, but Mondays right now are just super chill. Mondays have always kind of been chill days anyway. Um, but like specifically after the busyness of last week, um, things were just especially quiet today. Um, so really we're starting straight down into the Netherlands. I will say in Belgium today, it was, um, the King's Day there. However, the members of the royal family that I talk about do not participate in the King's Day celebration, um, because it includes a, like a mass, uh, a Tatum service for the King. Um, and I don't know, there's like this Belgian tradition that like it would and I see the point, it would be weird to go to a service that is literally praying for yourself. Um, and so the king and queen don't attend. Now, at some point soon, their children probably will. Um, like, Princess Elizabeth definitely will, but probably not until she's done with school. Um, at least undergrad and probably beyond. Um, so it's just like, you know, it was a day. Um And so in attendance for that service this year were King Philippe's parents, uh, King Albert and Queen Paola, um, as well as King Philippe's brother, um, all attended the King's Day service. Um, But that's literally like, that's what was happening. Um, There are some upcoming events for the Belgian Royals, I think starting tomorrow, possibly starting on Wednesday. Um, I don't know. I still actually have not made my like, oh, here's what's coming ahead chart because I roughly know. Um, but I still need to make it. So I have some awareness of like how busy the days are going to be. Um, so with that, we are just going to jump straight on down to the Netherlands. I'm not doing a ton of editing today, uh, simply because we have like a grand total of four events to talk about. So, um, and they were in two countries. So like, I'm not editing. I'm not really worried about it. Um, taking it easy. So today in the Netherlands, I just want to briefly start off by like a little COVID situation update going on in the Netherlands. So the Netherlands is kind of in a semi-lockdown right now. Um, And not like a full-blown lockdown, but things are closing at 8 p.m. um, And the Netherlands is a country that while not super party like Spain, where things go till 4 or 5 a.m., the Netherlands is frequently, you know, kind of similar, like 2 a.m., 3 a.m., um, and so nightclubs are closing at 8 p.m., which to me just, like, defeats the purpose. Um, like, who goes out and parties from, like, the time you get off work at 6 and then till 8? Like, I don't know. Um, obviously it is a containment issue, so 
Currently, their seven-day average um, is about 12,000 cases a day, which is really high right now, um, especially in a country that is 85% vaccinated um, and has done really well with social distancing. But it is cold and flu season. Um, it is winter. Everything has moved inside. I would not be surprised to see this go on um, in some of the other countries that we talk about, you know, Denmark um, and Norway, while not imposing a ton of restrictions, have um, certainly like announced their potential measures. Um, I know Norway has kept its borders, is going to keep its borders closed till like May. Uh, Denmark is probably gonna follow suit. Um, which is why, so for those who don't know, I was thinking about going to Denmark in January uh, for Queen Margrethe's uh, Jubilee. She'll be on the throne for 50 years. Um, and I was looking at it, the flights were super reasonably priced, hotels were reasonable, um, kind of getting ready to bite the bullet and like go. I was, su I was getting kind of excited about it. And then um, because I remembered we live in the age of COVID. Um, well, technically, yes, this is a business reason to travel. Um, it didn't seem like an essential business reason. It's certainly fun. Um, but I have told myself, like, I fully believe that we will see Queen Margaretha get to her 85th birthday, um, which is in three years, three and a half years. Um, and that's one better weather, but also like COVID by then should be really kind of under control. Um, and so I will go to that. Um, and it's kind of the one thing like preventing me right now from traveling, from buying a plane ticket to the UK. I mean, there are some other pieces as well in that, that I'm like, mm, maybe I just won't buy a plane ticket until the last minute um, to go to the UK for lots of different reasons. Um, but all of that being said, the Netherlands right now is experiencing a, a change. Um, so most of the events scheduled out for the week for the Royal family have switched to digital, not all of them, but a good few of them. Like we'll talk about in just a second. King Willem Alexander had an event in person today. Um, Queen Maxima was scheduled to have an in-person event and instead participated digitally. Um, and that's, that's okay. Um, you know, I'm glad that they took the necessary precautions pretty quickly. Um, you know, the, the announcement was made la last night that the Netherlands was going into this. Um, and so they have adapted and are now, um, going to be doing some digital things. I know King Willem Alexander had a working visit scheduled tomorrow that has been transferred to a digital event. Um, the incoming visit from Crown Princess Victoria. I had mentioned that that was this week, um, but it had been taken off of the Swedish royal calendar. Um, that event was canceled um, for, in particular, because of the Netherlands kind of shut down policy. They have kind of put themselves into a um, no travelers kind of state right now, um, which I think makes perfect sense. Um, and this could be the way things go. Um, you know, I'm certainly hopeful that things like this don't happen for the remainder of the, the month. Um, but like it, it could. Um, and I think we all just have to roll with the punches that COVID deals us right now. So that is the like update on the health situation in the Netherlands. Um, so let's get into the actual events now. Um, so this evening, <laughs> King, King Will Alexander and his mother, Princess Beatrix, I'm laughing because like, I just went on this whole spiel about how, you know, things were shutting down and like 8 PM was kind of this cutoff time. Meanwhile, this event, I think started at like 7:30 and ended at 10. Um, <laughs> So, you know, not everything is perfect. <laughs> um, but so they attended tonight the Dutch Ballet Gala, which is a fundraiser. It's an annual fundraiser that has been going on for 23 years. Um, that benefits Dutch dancers as well as dancers who are making their living in the Netherlands from, you know, other nationalities. Um, 
And this year, of course, due to the ongoing health situation that, of course, right now is actually getting worse, uh, not worse, but um, certainly different uh, than, you know, especially than last year's colder season. You know, we all expected it last year and this year. I think there was some hope that like, oh, you know, especially in the Netherlands where 85% of people are vaccinated, um, but that is a low vaccination number kind of not super low but like lower um than some others that we see um you know so dancers performers kind of all these industries are having a hard time making ends meet because they're not getting paid because they're not performing uh because there aren't audiences to perform for at the moment um so this is a way that has been supporting the arts for the past year and a half um and then some. At some point, probably in January, I'll just transition to saying two years, but like, I don't really know what to say right now. Cause it's been like 20 months, but like, that's a very specific number. So I'm just saying a year and a half. Um, so that was King Will Alexander's event. And then Queen Maxima today as the UN secretary general's special advocate, um, gave a digital speech and participated digitally in a round table called the Road to Gender Transformative Business Models, um, which is focused on improving the position of female uh, agriculture entrepreneurs. So female farmers, but also like markets and things along that nature that are female owned and operated. Um, so that was the event that Maxima took part in, again, participating digitally. Um, she was fully scheduled to be there. Um, but the current, uh, the caretaker prime minister came on and did like a, a live, um, announcement yesterday, last, last night at like 8 PM or something. Um, so things are shutting down temporarily in the Netherlands. Um, I think right now it's like a two week, three week, something or other, um, just to really help in the hospitalization issue, um, because, of course, with upticks in COVID cases, we're seeing hospitals being stretched to capacity again. Um, and it's just a, you know, preventative measure. It's, I don't think, anything too serious. And I'm not, it is kind of replicating itself throughout Europe. Um, we are seeing these increased COVID cases, um, for sure. And I think everywhere, but, like, my, obviously, my day-to-day -day focus is on the the European countries, because that's who I talk about every day. Um, and so some countries are possibly going to put this in, you know, it wouldn't surprise me if the Belgian Royal family kind of put some events on hold this week. Um, it would make me super sad. Don't get me wrong, but it wouldn't shock me. Um, so, you know, we'll just, we'll see what happens. I certainly am not panicked about anything. I, there is a lot going on still this week. Um, so anyway, that is what was going on in the Netherlands. Um, and so now we are going to jump back down to Spain. So obviously the countries that we're skipping, um, did not have events. So there was nothing new going on in the UK. They are gearing up. Uh, the Prince of Wales and Duchess of Cornwall are going on a official visit to Jordan and Egypt that I think starts tomorrow. Um, and so that'll be the primary focus there this week. Um, in Denmark, there was a public audience today, but like, I've just learned that that's not a thing I'm ever going to talk about and I've grown to accept it. Um, in Norway, there was nothing. Um, and so now we're in Spain. Um, so this morning, King Felipe and Queen Letizia celebrated the 75th anniversary of the Madrid Municipal Transport Company, which is essentially the um, public transit bus system uh, throughout the city of Madrid. So not the autonomous community, but the city itself, um, which is a little bit different, but primarily the same. Um, so they arrived... Um, at a centralized location bus stop, uh, which, yes, that was shocking to me this morning when I saw it. Um, they waited at the bus stop with other 
everyday people who take the bus to um, this particular bus was going to Atoka Station, which is like the main hub for the metro, but also um, you can board trains there, like Eurostar trains, etc. Um, and they took that. It's the, the number one line. Um, and so they rode that until the, the station, and then the bus went out of service, and they continued to their destination, which was the um, operations headquarters for the, the company. Um, so the bus was also a fully electric, zero-emission bus, which is, you know, awesome. Um, and then they visited the headquarters center. So the, the headquarters, which is the operations center, um, it does the maintenance, the new designs, all the things. Um, also houses all of the like no longer operating historic buses um and so they toured some of those there were like six on display including a double decker which do not really exist in spain um anymore they certainly did but they they were not utilized in the same way like it's pretty normal i would assume um at least from what I have been told and uh, researched in the UK, that red buses are pretty normal, even for London transport. They're not all tourist traps. Um, and so, but double deck buses in Madrid are not a thing. They're very more, um, they're much more streamlined and long in terms of, um, they're very similar if you've ever been to Los Angeles, like Los Angeles public bus system has these kinds of buses. Um, where I'm from has these kind of buses, like that's our public bus system. So they did that. So that was really cool. Um, and then in the afternoon, King Felipe attended the 30th anniversary of the Ibero-American summits. So these are the conferences that are held, I think on a, every two year basis. I don't think they're held every year. Um, but they are held every two and um, is all of the Ibero-American countries coming together to discuss their shared history, uh, their shared, primarily their shared language. Not all of them speak Spanish, most of them do. Um, and coming together to like use uh, that, those connections. So it's, it's just like, a, you know, we just had a Nordic Council thing. It's kind of like that. Um, or the Commonwealth, but like not quite, um, just of, of similar vein. So, um, he attended that and was also, also in attendance was the Spanish prime minister, the president of Portugal and the vice president of the Dominican Republic. Um, the president of Portugal is actually going to be in Spain probably for the next few days. I, I don't know if he's actually in Spain tomorrow, but he's in Spain the next day. So I doubt he's going back. But like, again, Portugal is like a 20 minute plane ride from Madrid. So it's not like unreasonable, but seems silly. But I know he is also going to Kotec, which is why the Italian president is here. Like, there's just a lot going on in Spain this week in terms of visits. Um, so, like, the Italian president arrives in Spain in, like, 12 hours, less than, actually, it's 10, but um, for a day-long state visit and then is attending Kotec with the king and the president of Portugal. Um, so, I assume the president of Portugal is just kind of hanging out in Spain. I don't, I don't really know. Um, certainly wouldn't be unreasonable for him to do so. But yeah, so that was the day in Spain. Again, we have the state visit from Italy, which I hate calling a state visit, but is, um, you know, it's a official reception, a gala dinner, um, a meeting at Zarzuela between the heads of state. Like it's a true state visit. It's just a day long, um, which in my book has, it has to be like two days for it to be counted, but you know, such is life. I'm still... I do think they have officially announced that it's like fully gala. Now that could change because the expectation up until like two hours before the um, visit from Korea was that it would be a gala dinner and then it was like last minute announced like, hey, no, not gala. 
Um, so we'll see. We will see if it is a gala dinner and if we get a tiara tomorrow or not. Uh, my ever-loving hope is that yes, but, um, you know, we'll, we'll see. So anyway, that is what was going on today. There was no events in the Swedish royal family that they have shared about. There were some other things, but they were not posted on their website. They were evening, so I expect them to share tomorrow, but I can't talk about it if I don't know what's going on. So alas, that brings us to the end of this episode. So I will end here and I will talk to you all tomorrow. Have a fantastic Tuesday. Bye.